I hope I'm in shot. Greetings, traveler. I'm Snap Jelly, and I haven't made a video in a time, a long time. And uh, as you can see, it's it's basically because I moved. But since you probably don't care about that, let's just get right into the video. If this is gonna be my background, I should probably make my bed. Done. Side swords. All right. So, what's a side sword? Well, basically, a side sword is the development stage between a medieval arming sword and a rapier. Now, essentially, if you look at this particular hilt design, uh, if you think away these fingerings right here and this knuckle bow, what you're left with is just a pretty standard medieval cross hilt design. And that's essentially what it is. If you want to find these kinds of swords, so basically swords with some attachments to the hilt, some extra protection on the hilt, but not an awful lot, not a full basket, what you're gonna have to search for is side sword. Now, the term side sword is a pretty modern term. That is, that is today, if you want to find a sword like this, you should uh, Google side sword. But basically, historically, the term side sword wasn't really used. A sword like this would just be called a rapier. And that is kinda what I want to talk about today. Um, essentially, I, I've, uh, I haven't had this sword for very long. I've played with it a little bit and I just kind of want to share some of my experiences with, with you guys. So the first thing I want to say is um, where does the line lie between arming sword and side sword? Well, it is pretty easy essentially because an arming sword just has a cross hill design. And if your sword has anything more than just a cross hill design, then basically it's a side sword. Um, usually side swords are also a bit narrower and a bit longer than your average arming sword, but it's not per se necessary really. You can have relatively short ones. Although um, usage of the side sword, it is starting to grow towards usage of the rapier, right? So it becomes a more and more um, stab centered uh, style of fighting over time. So, you know, as, as the sword progresses and develops, the swords get narrower and pointier and eventually it turns into the rapier, obviously. But that's not a necessity. Now, where the difference lies between a side sword and a rapier is a bit more vague. If you, just as an example, look at uh, Joachim Meyer's uh, rapier, uh, what he uses as a rapier is not really a rapier. It's what we would today call a side sword. And it's it's similar to this design, but it's it actually it doesn't even have fingerings. Um, the, the rapier that he uses, it sports a knuckle bow and a singular very large side ring on, on the right side of the sword. And that is basically, hang on, hang on, I just got a big pile of swords over there. Basically, if you look at this particular rapier hilt design, uh, it has this, that same singular side ring right here and the knuckle bow and everything else is just attached. It still has the same finger rings as you see on this design with the same extension here at the top. It just basically has three extra bars on this side, right? That connects to the knuckle bow and the blade is longer and thinner. Pretty much it. So in all honesty, there is not a lot of difference between these swords if, if you just look at those things. Like it has one extra ring and three extra bars and it's longer. So basically, you could use this, these swords in practically the same manner and still be fairly successful with it. If you would use this sword, this side sword, as a rapier, if you've practiced rapier fencing, you'd be all right. The only thing that would bother you, the thing that would bother you the most, is of course uh, the reach difference. That's something that you'd have to get used to. But uh, you could use this sword as a rapier and you'd be pretty much fine. Although, I might add to that, you could not per se use this sword really like you would use some side swords. Like again, Joachim Meyer has quite a lot of cutting and you can cut with a rapier, but it's just not as powerful. So there's some difference there, but just say, pretty much uh, this is, you could call this an early rapier and, and that's what it is. It is an early rapier. And, and when you go over that line from side sword to rapier, it, it differs a bit because you could have a rapier with a relatively wide blade but still have a basket. Or you could have a rapier that has a very thin and long blade but does not have a basket, just has it's quite limited hand protection. That's an option as well. So, um, yeah, it is the in-between stage 
but there is not a per se a clear difference between what is the one and what's the other. So there's a, a little bit of confusion there. Um, it's not a, a huge problem, I would say, but you know, just saying that, that you could have some arguments about people whether something is a side sword or a rapier. In all honesty, uh, it doesn't matter all that much. Now talking about the development of the hand protection, um, just looking at this sword in particular, obviously the fingerings are there to protect your fingers if you put a finger over the card like this, which um, as most of you probably know, you do this with swords that focus on stabbing because it brings the sword more in line with your arm when you hold it and it makes it a bit more comfortable. Uh, rapiers have this as well as I just showed and um, it is just supposed to protect your finger in case swords slide down because if you don't have the finger rings it's going to jump off your finger. That being said, you don't have to do this. That's something that I would also say. Also if you use a rapier or, or any other sword that might have a finger ring or something, uh, you don't have to use the finger ring. Um, you could use the sword like this and you know it would still work fine. It would arguably be a little bit more uncomfortable for your wrist but if you like this better then there's really nothing stopping you from using your sword this way. It's not that it allows you to do less things or more things if you put a finger over the guard. So I would recommend people trying it at first if, if they start practicing it but if, they, if you don't like it then you don't have to put a finger over the guard. Personally, I usually actually put two fingers over the guard, like this, depending on what glove I use and depending on how much room there is, like how wide the guard is on the specific sword. Um, I tend to use two fingers, put two fingers over the guard, and then I'd have to squeeze a bit harder in order to keep hold of my sword, but it does give me more control. So, um, you know, there, there's options there. You don't have to use it if you don't want it. Also, looking at this extension right here, uh, this bow, obviously, um, you guys probably all know the noggle from a messer, right? Or if you have a side ring here on the side, it is to protect your knuckles. Now, this ring is again the same, it's just, you know, up a bit higher. It's not directly on the guard, but it's over there. But it has the same function. If uh, Considering if, if you're my enemy, if we're fighting, and the camera is your face, right? And I would hold my point online, pointed at your face. This ring is supposed to just cover my hand, basically. That's the idea behind it. And on this side, there's obviously less hand, so there's less protection needed. And these extensions, they might just cover my thumb, but nothing more. And I will say though that it does help simply based on angulation. Grab the rapier again. If this happens, you know, dang, there it go. It hits that bow, what should I call it, instead of hitting my knuckles. And that helps, but it's far from perfect. Uh, the first time I used this sword, I couldn't use my uh, heavy glove because it didn't fit inside this um, this, this uh, handle essentially. And I got smacked on the thumb twice, <laughs> pretty much. If your opponent strikes you with a slightly weird angle, you can still get hit on the thumb if you don't bury it properly. So less hand protection obviously causes you to need to engage the guard properly a lot more. You have to mind your fingers, you have to mind the angulation of your sword in order to be able to save your fingers. Um, whereas with the basket, with, with more hand protection, it, it's still not perfect. You can still get stabbed in between like the openings, but it's you know more of a given that your hands are safe. The downside of these swords though is, like I just said, um, this particular design does not fit my heavy glove. Um, I, ca I cannot put it in there. And even if I could, it probably would not be very comfortable. So you need a lighter kind of glove to be able to use a sword like this. But if you have a lighter glove, it's more dangerous for your hands and this sword does not have an awful lot of hand protection. You see, a rapier, I can just put a light sparring glove in here and practically I'll be safe because the only thing that could happen is if a sword like gets sticks right there, then it might scratch my finger. So if I have a light glove, it's gonna prevent the scratches and I'm pretty much safe. On this one, you know, there's not a lot of protection. There's a lot that could go wrong here and they can still hit my hand. So, um, it's it's quite, it's, it's annoying slightly because you need a bigger glove, but also you need kind of the delicate control and you can't fit a bigger glove in there. So you need to find it in between there. I also tried um, the red dragons again. See if I could fit the red dragon in there because it's basically the go-to middleweight glove as you could say for saber fencing and stuff like that but again I could fit it in there but not comfortably so 
I need to find something else. I need to reinforce uh, like a lighter glove that I have with some leather or something to try and make this more safer to use, full contact. Otherwise, um, it's gonna be a no-go. Otherwise, I'm gonna break some hands. Mine. That being said though, these are honestly some of my favorite kinds of sword, if not my favorite kind of sword um, ever. And I think they deserve more love. The weird thing about side sword is that everybody loves them. <laughs> a lot, lots of people really, really like the sword, but not many people use them, at least in, around where I am. Not many people use them. Um, or when they write stories or whatever, they either go full medieval or they go renaissance and go for the rapier. And these swords are forgotten. And that's sad because they're so awesome. I love these. They look beautiful.